Well, since the beginning of the pandemic, several African countries have been calling for a patent waiver on COVID-19 vaccines. So far, without a result. But now an mRNA hub for Africa, the first of its kind, is being set up in Cape Town. It aims to copy the Moderna vaccine. And our correspondent, Adrian Krish, has this report. It's a first for the continent. This inconspicuous building in an industrial area of Cape Town is the base for Africa's mRNA vaccine technology hub. With vaccines in short supply in Africa, the WHO and COVAX initiative led the drive to set up a local technology sharing platform. That's one of the positive legacies of COVID. We now, in the last eight months, have seen this, this, this massive funding available now for biotechnology in South Africa, in Cape Town, and also in Africa. Afrigene is the company tasked with developing and producing mRNA vaccines. These are relatively new but highly effective vaccines that so far only two major companies have commercialized, BioNTech and Moderna. Afrigene was counting on a cooperation with Moderna. The model was that we will receive a technology transfer, turnkey technology transfer, but that didn't happen. So the team now has jumped in with our university partners and the knowledge base in South Africa to develop our own vaccine. One of the key partners is in Johannesburg, the Antiviral Gene Therapy Research Unit at Witwatersrand University. They've been working on mRNA technology since 2015 as one of the only research units on the continent. They are now sharing their skills and knowledge with Afrigen. We have been able to take information which is available in the public domain to work out how the Moderna mRNA is produced. So we have the sequence and we have the context of that sequence which we've been able to reproduce. But of course, the purpose of that really is to use as a reference rather than as something which we want to try and uh, use as a, as a product. Um, so we would like to develop our own ideas and we are in fact doing that already and compare that to the Moderna vaccine. Back in Cape Town, Pietro Terblanche is still hoping Moderna comes on board as this would speed up the process. Moderna has announced a patent waiver while the pandemic is still ongoing, but afterwards no commercialization will be possible without its approval. We would like to have a voluntary license to be able to transfer this technology to other low and middle income countries to use the platform for other vaccines, HIV, TB, Ebola, flu. This hub and, and the capacity and the capability we're building here is, is, is beyond COVID. So this, this in fact, is part of a strategy from, from Africa to produce 60% of our vaccines by 2040. So this is part of building an industry. Today, most vaccines used on the continent are imported. Afrigen and its partners aim to bring the first homegrown products to market within three years. And now I'd like to bring in Candice Sahoma. She is an access campaign officer for Doctors Without Borders, and she joins us now from Johannesburg. A very warm welcome to the show. Candice, how optimistic are you that an African-developed mRNA vaccine would make COVID-19 shots more available across the continent? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I think I am very um, optimistic and, you know, it's something that we have been calling for as, as civil society, um, looking at the current um, disparities when it comes to vaccine access, uh, particularly in Africa, where we have 7% 7, 7 of our population only vaccinated. Um, having a broader manufacturing of these um, uh, uh, vaccines would enable access. It would, you know, enable, um, as, as, as you might know, that, you know, an issue that we encounter in, in Africa Africa in particular is an issue around supply and broadening manufacturing would enable um, Africa to be able to be more independent and supply um, its, 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 its countries or its, its people um, to get vaccinated. Now, they're still working on this project, but time is of the essence in this pandemic. Uh, would it not make more sense to change patent laws forcing big pharmaceutical firms to actually allow African companies to produce more of their vaccines? 
Yeah, and I think it's, as you mentioned, like time is of the essence and, you know, it would make so much of a difference if we had this TRIPS waiver. As you know, that South Africa and India have actually proposed a waiver on patents um, on all COVID-19 medical tools. Um, it would actually save us more time as it would expedite the process of sharing this technology with all the respective um, capable manufacturers. And also knowing that we do have capable manufacturers in the continent, um, you know, MSF has done analysis um, looking at, you know, um, a capability in Africa. Of, of, of companies that can um, um, uh, manufacture mRNA vaccine technology, you know, so we do have the the capacity. What is needed now is the te sharing of te of technology, and there's already initiatives like the mRNA hub that has been established to be able to to transfer this technology. So if we were to be, have you know companies originator companies sharing this technology with um, the mRNA hub, that would expedite the process of us getting um, 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 uh, manufacturing these vaccines. It would shorten you know the length of it, as as you know that with the mRNA hub, they need like a, a timeline of about three years. If we would have, you know, an, an existing um, technology like Pfizer and Moderna sharing their technology with the hub, that would shorten the time to about a year where we can able to, to manufacture these vaccines. So I think that process, that sharing of technology is a very key um, element and also kind of waiving um, patents is a very critical um, um, uh solution that is needed to expedite the process of, of, of upscaling manufacturing. I also want to ask you about a couple other tools in the fight against COVID-19, namely things like tests, uh, things like medical equipment. From your daily experience working with Doctors Without Borders in South Africa, what are the biggest barriers to making sure people do have access to those tools? Yeah, and I think it's it's similarly, I mean, even earlier in the pandemic, we experienced a lot of, you know, shortages when it comes to um, um, accessing these medical um, tools, like testing testing tools. So, and as you know, that we also um, recently um, um, encountered um, export burns, bans, or rather travel bans, which has, un unfortunately, is also kind of affecting even our operations, where we are anticipating to get, you know, testing um, um, tools from other um, parts of the world. World. However, due to the current um, bans on, you know, South Africa, that in itself affects our ability to actually receive those those, those testing um, material to be able to um, test um, patients in our in our operations. So, and unfortunately, you know, those are the kind of um, uh, uh, sort of challenges that we that we encounter, and much more broadly that um, countries have also imposed um, export bans, and that's why um, we are calling for, um, you know, sharing and collaboration to enable um, countries like South Africa, with, you know, and that they don't need to actually rely on other countries um, to be able to have these testing. We do have the manufacturing capacity. What is needed is for, for the technology to be shared so that we can uh, manufacture and be able to better respond um, to the demand in our own countries without having to rely to other um, um, countries who have um, unfortunately imposed these um, restrictions. Okay, so a call for more sharing in what is ultimately a global struggle. Uh, Candice Sohoma, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.